The new Mavic Air 2 is here and it's completely amazing. But like with everything in life, nothing is perfect. I have gathered all the questions I've been asking myself or found on forums or online and put them in this video. This is how I came up with this long ass list of 31 frequently asked questions. And since I can't update a video on YouTube, I will be able to answer them in the comments directly and if they're relevant, I'll put them in the new article on dronesguide.com where I will keep adding answers like this. Let's get started, in no particular order of importance. Number 1. Is the smart controller compatible with the Mavic Air 2? Short answer, no. However, DJI did promise that two weeks after the release, they will do a software update that will make it compatible. And I do tend to believe them, or else they would lose a lot of money. So yeah, if that was a concern of yours, worry not. What resolutions does the ActiveTrack 3.0 work in? Not many people know this, but it's confirmed that the new ActiveTrack 3.0 system doesn't work while shooting video in 4K 60fps. It does work with 4K 30 and every resolution and frame rate below that. What is the ADS-B system in the Mavic Air 2 all about? The ADS-B system is an acronym for Automated Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, which DJ calls AirSense. Quite catchy, I'd say, it is a system used by planes and helicopters to know if any other aircraft is in the vicinity. Will other aircraft know the position of my Mavic Air 2? No, don't worry, the new system is ADS-B in, not out, so it only receives the signal from other airplanes, but it doesn't transmit it back. So your privacy is still there. Does the Mavic 2 ADS-B work in Europe? DJI isn't currently producing Mavic Air 2 drones that are equipped with a spec that are sold in Europe. It's probably because ADS-B isn't the standard in Europe yet, but from what I understood they're working on it. Is the sensor really 48 megapixel or just a marketing strategy? DJI bragged about its amazing 48 megapixel sensor on their new Air 2 drone. However, is it that special? Well, frankly, the sensor is indeed 48 megapixel, but with some nuances to take note of. This should probably not be compared with the Mavic 2 Pro 20 megapixel DNGs though. That is because the relationship between sensor size itself and the total amount of megapixel is very important. It's a more sophisticated problem that I'll discuss more in depth in the article below and in a future video. So subscribe and hit the bell notification icon if you want to support me creating more in-depth videos about the Mavic Air 2 in general. Overall, as a conclusion, when it comes to the 48 megapixel sensor, I would view it like this. The 48 megapixel photos are actually that big and detailed. However, since the sensor, even though bigger than the previous Mavics, is still smaller than the Mavic 2, it's not doing as great in low light conditions. So the 48 megapixel is mainly created for taking pictures in perfect daylight where you're able to crop in to have a better look. What's the range of the Mavic Air 2 in Europe? Speaking about Europe, since we're all that special apparently, we have a CE limitation, not FCC. All the drones sold in Europe do require a CE certification, so the 10 km range will be about 6 km in Europe, which is more than enough for most people anyway. You can check the graphic comparison between all the drone ranges in FCC and CE down in the description. Will the new Mavic Air 2 get Litchi app support? I do know some of you use the Litchi app because let's say it gives you more freedom. So is it compatible with the new Mavic Air 2? Unfortunately, it doesn't yet get API support from DJI until they release a software development kit. They didn't yet do it for the Mavic Mini, so it will probably be a while until you'll be able to use it with the Litchi app, if ever. Speaking about that, what app does the Mavic Air 2 use? Even though it's one of the most advanced drones DJI released so far, it is only compatible with the DJI Fly app, which is separated by the original DJI app alongside the Mavic Mini. It's still a fully-fledged and capable application, so don't worry about that. Number 10. Is the HDR video actually effective? Some people had doubts that the HDR in video might not work properly or might be simply useless. But this is actually the future I'm most excited about. You can see many examples where it does an incredible job of properly exposing many parts of the image. Since we're talking about a drone, that will usually have the part of the image with the sky and the sun in it. This is very important. Definitely a big selling point of the new Mavic here too. Number 11. Can you adjust sharpness? Unfortunately, there is no option currently to change the sharpness of the image, which can be a turn off for some people. I also prefer my videos with medium sharpness, especially if they're already recorded in 4K. But it's not the end of the world. Knowing DJI, they'll probably make a later release of the software that covers this in app. Can the Mavic Air 2 take slow motion video? 
Well, not only that, but the DJI Mavic Air 2 is the first drone in the DJI lineup that can actually shoot 240 frames per second in 1080p. This means not even the expensive Inspire 2 can do it or the Mavic 2 Pro. That makes for some really great slow motion shots. But if you also want high quality for that, the drone still has you covered with the 60 frames in 4K. Nothing to complain about that. Definitely the best specs from DJI so far. Number 13. Can the HDR be used with RAW or just JPEG? You can't use RAW with HDR at the same time with the Mavic Air 2, maybe in the future update or something. Number 14. What's with that new smart photo feature of the Mavic Air 2? I thought it wasn't anything but an automatic exposure mode, but it seems it's more complex than that. Since it adjusts the photo exposure by detecting what type of setting you might have, for example, it can detect five different types of scenes, something like a standard landscape or close-up subject shot, etc. So definitely useful. Does the Mavic Air have DCNA-like or D-Log? It only has DCNA-like but no D-Log, which means you can capture pretty flat footage for later edit, but not on the level of the Mavic 2 Pro, for example. What is the maximum storage size the Mavic Air 2 can handle? It can support a maximum of 256GB in a single microSD card, and it also has 8GB of storage built in, which is great if you forget your card. By the way, leave a comment down below if that happens to you too. It happens pretty often to me, so I'm starting to think that's something wrong with myself. Number 17. What microSD card should you buy for the Mavic Air 2? It does record in 4K 60p and takes 48 megapixel photos, so there's a lot of data at once. I had some issues with the microSD cards in the past and I would pay a lot of money just to have a solid one. Since the Air 2 has a max bitrate of 120 megabits per second, that translates into about 15 megabytes per second, let's say. Any V30 and higher rated SD card will be more than enough, preferably SanDisk Extreme. Again, don't buy a card that's more than 256GB because that's the maximum it can handle. I would actually recommend going lower than that, let's say 64 and get two of them. And you can change them on every battery swap. If you don't want to spend time to choose a good microSD card for your drone, then just go down in the description because I have linked some of the best you can buy. Speaking about that, number 18. What is the best place to buy the Mavic Air 2 from? Since I started talking about getting microSD cards, I actually noticed that you can buy the Mavic Air 2 from Amazon directly. I thought you can only buy it from the DJ store, however, it seems DJ does have an official account directly on Amazon. And what's funny is that they probably deliver it faster from Amazon than from DJ itself. That is because Amazon does have some strict rules to abide by, and they're probably already in the Amazon warehouses. Other good places to get it from are the official DJ store, of course, B&H, and even Best Buy. They're all good places with fast shipping. I'd say Amazon is the fastest indeed. I do have links for this in the description and in the first comment. Some of them are affiliate links and help support this channel's growth. So if you like these videos, I would definitely appreciate the help. Number 19. Is DJI Care worth buying for the Mavic Air 2? Considering that the Mavic Air 2 does have a new obstacle avoidance system, you might think it's quite safe. However, the strange thing is that usually when you're feeling the most comfortable, that's exactly when the most accidents happen. I have seen a few situations where people overtaxed the obstacle avoidance and it hit a tree or fell into the water. I think DJI Care Insurance was always great to have, especially since the new drone doesn't have side and top sensors. Number 21. What phone size can the new Mavic Air 2 handle? This is probably one of the most asked questions online. Let me say that I simply love the new controller and especially its phone holder mainly because I really hated the old system where I had to take off my phone case, then you have to fit in the cable in the phone and then the sliding slot on the slide, a pain in the ass for sure. The new holder at the top works like this. You simply stretch the holder, put the phone in, attach the cable to the phone and done. And what's the best, it can hold much bigger phones. You can see the dimensions on the screen right now, which means you can definitely get any phone to stick in there, as long as it's not super thick. Number 22, does the controller have a pause button? Pause button is extremely useful to suddenly stop smart flight mode in case of emergency. Some people told me that there isn't a pause button in the controller, and it's true, there isn't an exclusive pause button like we've been used with before. But I have been deceived, as DJI decided to put the pause button and the return to home button in the same spot. So by pressing once, you can pause any smart flight mode, but if you want the drone to return to home, you just press and hold it for a few seconds. Number 23. Can you use the DJI Fly app with an iPad? Yes, finally DJI released an update for DJI Fly to work on tablets. 
Even more than that, you're probably wondering if you can even use a tablet with a controller for the Mavic Air 2. And yes, of course you can. You can use a separate mount like a Mav mount or Polar Pro Fly Deck, which are amazing mounts that work just as well for the new controller as for the old ones. Links are in the description if you're interested. Are the sticks removable? Yes, the sticks are removable. You can store them at the bottom of the controller. Number 25. What is the live stream resolution? The live resolution is 1080p up to 10 km in range, which is pretty amazing. Number 26, quite a big question, is it worth upgrading from the original Mavic Air to the Mavic Air 2? Frankly, it depends on your preferences. This is probably a long discussion to have, but I would make it shorter by saying totally yes. There is no doubt the Mavic Air 2 is the far superior drone. Almost twice the battery life and the OcuSync 2.0 is enough to justify spending $200 more on it, not to bring the other advantages in front. But if you're a casual user who doesn't need improved flight time, range and image quality, the original Air, if you already have it, is still a solid drone. Number 27. Is the new DJI Mavic Air camera better than the Mavic 2 Pro? This is a pretty difficult to answer question, because it depends on what you want to do with it. In my opinion, the short answer is no. I still think the 1-inch sensor can't be that easily beaten yet. But it's not far off. Considering the price difference, I would say the Mavic Air 2 is the better choice. If you don't care about money and want the slight edge, especially in low-light scenarios, you should definitely go for the Mavic 2 Pro. It does have the bigger sensor and the changeable aperture. I will cover the differences between these two drones pretty soon, so don't forget to subscribe. Number 28. Who in fact is the Mavic Air 2 for? Ok, so we do have a drone that's almost in the top of the game Pro lineup, but not quite, and it's also well above the DJI Mavic Mini, both in size and specs. So who is this drone perfect for? I would say it's mainly for hobbyists and content creators who are looking to step up their image quality from some of the previous drones on the market. It's also great for photographers and anyone looking to make money with a drone. It does have a really wide range of uses. It is a bit hard to pinpoint exactly what this drone is made for, but right now I do think it is my favorite drone from DJI because I also take the price into account. Number 29. Is the Fly More Combo from DJI worth buying? As always, my recommendation is to indeed buy the Fly More Combo, especially if you are serious about drone shots and videography in general. The Fly More Combo comes with 3 batteries, a multi-charger and additional accessories, and it's as cheap as simply buying 2 additional batteries by themselves. So no question about that, if you're gonna buy the additional batteries anyway, go for the Fly More combo, it will save you some money. Number 30. How good is the new Mavic Air 2 compared to the Auto Evo series? I mean the Auto Evo 1 and the Auto Evo 2. I am really excited to compare the Mavic Air 2 with a lot of drones now, one of which is the Auto Evo 2. Which although much more expensive drone, it does have the same sensor as the Air 2, which is quite curious. I am going to compare them in a new article soon. Again, if you don't want to compare the specs of all these drones, including the Mavic 2, the Auto Evo 2, the Fimi X8 and every other DJI drone out there, I do have a complete table, which I recommend watching on a computer screen, as it's quite big. You can get it for free by clicking the link down in the description. Number 31. What will you buy the Mavic Air 2 for? This is more of a personal question. I was curious to make sort of a poll in the comments to, with you guys quickly answering what are you gonna use this drone for? Is it professional work, photography, videography, just watching the neighbor's dog, or maybe you have a more interesting story? I do actually want to hear it. If you're still undecided what to buy, I do recommend you check the drone tool down in the description, where you can sort drones by price, battery life, range and so on, and you get everything recommended in the table next to it. If you like drones in general and don't know where to start, you can visit Jonesgitter's homepage and it will guide you to the respective categories where you can learn a lot more about drones in general or about specific models. If you want to see more videos like this, it would help a lot if you'd like this video for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. I post about 3 times per week. If you want, you can watch the related video right here, the next recommended video right here, and you can subscribe to Dronesgator easily if you click on my face right now. I usually post buyer guides for drones in general, individual reviews, photography and videography tips and so on. So thanks for watching and see you later alligator.